George Zimmerman's defense team was successful in convincing the jury that he used self-defense in the shooting death of Trayvon Martin. But Marissa Alexander, a 31-year-old African-American woman who claimed she was protecting herself from her abusive husband and fired a warning shot into her own home, received a 20-year sentence after using the same defense last year. However, unlike Zimmerman, Marissa Alexander did use the controversial stand-your-ground law in defense. Joining the panel is Salamisha Tillett, Assistant Professor of English and Africana Studies at the University of Pennsylvania, Jelani Cobb, an Associate Professor of History and the Director of the Institute for African American Studies at the University of Connecticut, and Joanne Reed, MSNBC contributor. So Marissa Alexander shoots a ceiling, gets 20 years, and is prosecuted by Angela Corey aggressively and, and personally, but Corey couldn't even bother to prosecute this case against Zimmerman. So when the defense says, oh, well, what would have happened if George Zimmerman was black? This is the answer, mm -hmm. right? This is, she shot a ceiling and she got 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, one thing you're pointing to is the fact that the answer already been, is already out there, that we see that black victims or black women in this case are disproportionately incarcerated, disproportionately sentenced. All these things are true, right? Um, but also, I think this speaks to how violence against women in particular um, isn't seen as like a, an issue that can be something that motivates us, mm -hmm. but also that women who, who stand, up, stand their ground against perpetrators are oftentimes put in the judicial system, criminal system. But the other thing I want to point out here is with George Zimmerman and the way in which his own pattern of violence was mm -hmm. not allowed in this case, right? Yep. So the 2005 arrest, um, uh, domestic, domestic violence charges against George Zimmerman, his defense was very similar to his defense here. Mm -hmm. um, when his ex-wife said that she pushed him, uh, sorry, that he pushed her, mm -hmm. and his response was, well, she actually pushed me, that she hurt me, and then he actually countersued her, right? So that if there was an arrest there, if he were prosecuted um, as vigorously mm -hmm. as, you know, Marissa Alexander was prosecuted, maybe we wouldn't have Trayvon Martin. But since violence against women is not taken as seriously um, as these other issues, this is what happens, you, you know? So I just want to see the ripple yeah. effect against violence against women leads to more and more Violence. violence. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say one of the many ironies of the case for against Marissa Alexander is that Angela Corey, one of her uh, rationales for prosecuting so vigorously Marissa Alexander is because there were two children in the home. Mm -hmm. So this idea that violence, a, a gunshot that could have hit a child, that mm -hmm. was her whole rationale. She yeah. initially offered a plea bargain. Marissa Alexander didn't take it. And so she charged her to the full extent of the law and the stand your ground case actually fell apart. So I was surprised, at least after the jury selection took mm -hmm. place, that Angela Corey didn't see a, a jury, a panel full of six women and think, maybe Maybe I should be on that bar instead of my three underlings. Maybe yes. maybe I ought to stand up there because she is a vigorous, as she puts it, advocate for children. I want I, I want to I want to show her. I mean, we're seeing we're seeing her now. I, I have to say, Joy, give me some insight into what happened last night in terms of Corey's disposition. It, it was late. I was tired. I was emotional, and I actually for a moment got confused and thought. Was she on the defense? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not even being funny that her coming out and saying, well, let's listen just for a moment to, to, to her initially. Good evening. We are so proud to stand before you and to tell you that when we announced the charges 15 months ago, we also promised that we would seek the truth for Trayvon Martin and due process for George Zimmerman. So the smile, the I'm proud, it was... I'm sorry, am I the only one who thinks that this no, is strange? No, you're not. It, the whole thing has been just a strange thing. You have to keep in mind, Angela Corey is not the prosecutor for Seminole County. She actually prosecutes in Duval County. Mm -hmm. She was appointed by Governor Rick Scott, Tea Party Republican. She herself, a conservative Republican, uh, after the outcry over the non-arrest. She then makes these charges, which a lot of attorneys in Florida felt was an overcharge, that she mm -hmm. should have gone manslaughter. That's what C Detective Serino initially put on his paper. He thought it should be manslaughter. Uh, so she, she charges second degree, and then she doesn't herself argue the case, and you know, one could argue, and un, a sort of uncharitable reading of it yeah. would be that this is a Republican elected official in a very conservative county whose result of her prosecution was what the majority of people in Seminole County probably want. Mm -hmm. This will now not impact her reelection. There is no video of her standing up arguing against George Zimmerman. Right. That video doesn't exist. She's sitting in the gallery with everyone else. A lot of people watching the trial didn't even know who that was right. that was sitting there. So, you know, one could argue that she feels that she did enough for the family to say, listen, I got you a trial, mm -hmm. but that the conviction doesn't. It actually doesn't hurt her politically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jelani, you wrote 
that it was Trayvon Martin that was on trial. Right. Uh, and from the outset, one of the things I think that's crucial for us to, to remember here is that these laws did not malfunction. Yeah. Uh, we have this idea that this was a miscarriage of justice, and it, it may have been in the theoretical sense, sense, but in the jurisprudential sense, this was exactly what was supposed to happen. And so when we're talking about how we got to this point, what was in the, the minds of the lawmakers who were aligned with Alec when they were, cut with, when they were uh, conceiving of these, uh, these laws? What were in the minds of the prosecutor um, you know, as they realized that they were going to have to bring these charges? It's a, it's a short-term loss, but a long-term victory for them. Um, and I agree with you also. When I saw the murder two charge, you know, it reminded me of the situation with Amadou Diallo, mm -hmm. uh, where I believe, if I'm correct, they went for murder one in that instance. Mm -hmm. And everyone knew that you couldn't make a murder one yeah, charge stick, yeah. right? And so by in, in so doing, you have to you can cynically placate African Americans and say we went for the strongest possible mm -hmm. charges, and you can also, with a wink and nod, say to your constituency, we know this is not. Going to stick. Well, well, I mean, even what Rick Scott did with creating this commission to look at Stand Your Ground, which wound up giving no recommendations Nothing. for any changes. Yeah. So they had the sort of cosmetic impact of addressing the needs of the community or the concerns, but with actually doing nothing. And Michael, doesn't this lead, I mean, you know, in my, in, in my neighborhoods in, in New Orleans, we have all the mayor and the police chief all saying, when something bad happens, call us, tell us, you know, snitch. Isn't this part of the reason why people don't? Is so you know the language is oh hip hop is the reason that people don't communicate with the police. But part of it feels like people don't communicate with the police because it feels like there is no justice in this. Well, I think that was the cultural difference between Don West and Rachel Chantel. When he kept asking her, "Why didn't you go to the police? Why didn't you go to the police?" Mm -hmm. The police didn't arrest her friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why right, did right, you go to the police department friend. who yeah. believed the guy who killed your friend? Right. And he could not understand that a young black woman does not trust the police to do justice to her friend. Yep. Right? So I think that is, and then yep. Broward County puts out a video saying, we got your back. Yep. We got your <laughs> yep. back. Yep. No, you don't. Yep. Right. Absolutely. And the fact that Trevor Martin didn't call 911. People are saying, why didn't he just call 911? Because he was afraid. Because, because <laughs> every person sitting at this table is a parent. When we come back, I'm going to ask, what should we say to our children? Young black man can walk, you know, can't walk, can't walk freely from the store without being murdered. Um, but it's just a sad thing. It makes you really think about sort of that, that dynamic in our country about race relations and a number of things.